Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, I need to sit on my foot. Because I can't sit like a normal person. Getting distracted. Distracted, because he's distracted. So, I've been getting a lot of requests on like Tumblr and Instagram and maybe a few on Twitter. I don't know, there have been a few places about people asking me about my surgery that I had like a year and a half ago. So I thought I'd explain a little bit and kind of tell you my experience with how, how my surgery was, how we think. I got my ganglion cyst. It's still a mystery, but I'll, I'll tell you what they thought because we have no idea. I went to a, from between 2011 and 2012, I went to a graduate program in Pittsburgh for ballet. And basically it's just like, well it's not even college, you're just going and dancing and paying for it. It's like a traineeship, almost. Um, so I was there and when I got back from winter break, like the day of, we were learning Serenade, George Balanchine Serenade, and I sprained my ankle. I was so pissed. Ugh. And like, I had spent all Christmas break working on things, trying to figure out like what I was doing wrong because the teachers were telling me I looked like shit, which wasn't very fun. Uh, but first day back, I was so excited. I was pumped. I felt awesome. I was in great shape. Could normally over Christmas break, people gain weight. I didn't. Yeah, and then I sprained my ankle, coming out of like a sutanu. It was so stupid. I was, I was so pissed. But it wasn't like a normal sprained ankle. We're just like, ow, my foot hurts. Like I should sit down. No, I saw like, my vision went black. Like I couldn't see. Like I could see my feet and the floor. And I started seeing stars, and I felt like I was gonna either throw up, pass out, or throw up and then pass out. It was not fun, and I could like I tried to keep dancing, and I was just kind of like stumbling out of everything. And I was trying not to cry because we had like a guest artist there teaching us serenade. So I went and got a pack of packet of ice, and I was just like, you know what, I'll be fine by tomorrow. Like it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I woke up at. I think five o'clock in the morning is when I woke up with excruciating pain in my foot. And I was just like, no. And my foot had turned like purple and green and blue. And it was so swollen that you, that you couldn't see like my ankle bone. It was not good. My roommate ended up driving me to the emergency room. Because there was a weird noise. There's a crow outside. Uh, my roommate had to drive me to the emergency room shortly after because that's the only thing my healthcare would take since there was nowhere around me that I could go. My healthcare only covered emergency visits at the time. And I had a second degree ankle sprain and it sucked because they were just like, well, nothing's broken. You just have a really bad sprain and you can't dance for like two or three months. You have to be on crutches for like two or three weeks. And wear an air cast, and I was just like, somebody shoot me now. Like, are you kidding? So I came, I went back to the studio, and I was on crutches for like a longer than like two weeks because it hurt to walk so bad. Two or three months passed. Like, I didn't start dancing until March, and that was really, really rough. But March came, and I started dancing, and my ankle had completely like fixed itself. It had completely healed. There was no swelling. Um, it hurt a little bit to point my foot and to flex it, but I mean that's like normal with sprained ankles and like recovering from them. You have less range of motion, but there was a different kind of pain and I knew it wasn't the sprained ankle and I couldn't figure out what it was. Like there were days where I would be completely fine and like the entire next week I could barely walk because it hurt so bad and it was yeah it it hardcore sucked not knowing what was wrong with my foot and eventually like I know between like stress and 
I had some like roommate issues and I got sick like every week and not knowing what was wrong with my foot like I was like falling apart and not being able to know if I could dance um, I left the program early and moved back in with my mom which I know a lot of people especially in dance programs especially in year-round programs are like oh my god like you left a year-round program like you're a horrible person it's like if you didn't know what was wrong with your foot and you couldn't dance because it hurt so bad and you lived on the other side of the country you like you would go home too to figure out what was wrong like there was no point of me staying there um in the state that i was in so moved back with my parents and we went to see a podiatrist first um and I had some x-rays done and they thought that there was they didn't see anything broken so they're like okay let's let's go in and do an MRI maybe there's like a bone floating around somewhere that we couldn't see um and we'll get back to you in like two weeks so it's like oh god and by the way like I know like it is true MRI machines are freaking terrifying they are so scary <laughs> it's just like this big long tube and I didn't know if I was going to have to go in like all the way or not, but they only stuck me in up until about like my hips. And they give you headphones so you can listen to music and they give you blankets if you get cold because it gets pretty darn cold. And the machine makes really, really, really loud noises. So they turn up the music pretty high. I was stupid and picked classical music and I could barely hear it with the sound of the machine. It was bad. Um, but the anticipation and waiting for the MRI results drove me nuts. I think it actually drove me crazy for a bit because I was just like, oh my god, what if there's like a bone floating around in my foot and it like tears something or severs something? Like what if it's stuck and I have to get surgery? Like it was bad. I was hardcore freaking out. But two weeks later I got a phone call. I think they actually told me to go back in with the podiatrist. I, they didn't call me. I went, yeah, yeah. I went back to the podiatrist and he had my MRI results, and he didn't show me, which was really stupid. I was just like, why? I want to see what's in my foot. Why didn't you show me the MRI? I didn't see it until, like, a year later. And that was stupid. I was pissed. Um, but he told me that in the back of my ankle, in between my Achilles tendon and... I can't remember what bone it is. It starts with a T. I can't remember. I'll, like insert it here what it's called but it's like because you have your heel bone and then you have like your leg bone and there's one in between that everything shifts around and that's what it's called but it was basically smushed in between my tendon and this bone and they said yep it's a it's a ganglion cyst and it's stuck there and they said most likely i'd have to have surgery like i could do surgery i could we could, they could try to drain it, and I know people have said that like after draining them like once or twice they go away, so or something like that. Or you could just leave it, which wasn't an option for me. So I went the alternate route and I tried having them drain it twice. First time, it was awesome. Like I had no pain in my foot for like a whole week and a half. I think it was awesome. I could dance perfectly fine. Like nothing hurt. I was in heaven. And then, like, after the week and a half, it came back and filled up again. And I was just like, no. So I went back and had it redrained. This time it was a lot harder because I looked at the needle while it was in my foot draining the fluid. And it's not, I wouldn't even say it's fluid, it's more like jelly. It's a weird, like, gross, like, clear jelly looking kind of stuff it's not pretty it's gross um but i had to sit in the chair for like 20 minutes waiting to not feel like i was gonna throw up because i have like the hugest fear of needles like i don't like needles going in my arms i don't even like sewing needles those scare me too oh no no. Um, 
But yeah, the, after I got a drain DNF, right before I left, um, the podiatrist told me that if it came back again, then I would have to have surgery. And sure enough, two days after I had it drained, it came back. And I was pissed. I was so pissed. Because I was just like, oh, hell to the no. Hell to the no. Do I want to have surgery? Like, have someone cut open my foot? <laughs> Gross. It just grossed me out. I was just like, no way, Jose. There must be another way to do this. And also, like, on top of that, he told me that he was going to cut in on, like, the inside of my foot. It's so, like, let's say, like, this is my foot, okay? Like, this is looking down at my foot, and this is the inside. There's, like, muscle lining this whole part of your foot. Like, muscles and nerves and tendons, and he was just going to slice through all of it. And I was just like, uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. No, you don't. And he was kind of creepy, so I didn't trust him anyways. Um, but as a dancer, you don't want them to have to cut in on the inside of your foot. Like, as much as you can avoid it, like, having to, oh, especially if you wear point shoes, or even, like, any shoes, like, having to, like, especially, yeah, mostly point shoes, because you have the elastics and the ribbons, and having to have the ribbons and elastic rub against, like, the scar from after, or from post-surgery, it's just like, oh, it would hurt so bad. Um... So, I didn't get the surgery at first. I tried to do an alternate route and try home remedies. And I researched it for about like a month before I decided which one I was gonna try. And I ended up going with Epsom salt and hot water. And I don't remember where I found it, but someone had said that it had worked for them and eventually it went away. Um, it didn't for me. But every day from then on, like then on the, up until I had my surgery, I would get like, I think I still have the bucket, I'm not going to show it to you, it's just like a rectangular like trash bin um, that I got from like Target or something. And I would fill it up with scalding hot water and enough Epsom salts to cover the bottom of the trash can so you couldn't see the bottom of it. And... I would stick my foot in it for about a half an hour until or until the water got like room temperature and then I would take my foot out and massage my cyst and because of because they had drained it I could get a little bit of the jelly goop fluid stuff out of it so it would shrink and I did that every day for about 10 months it was a long time I I don't know how I was able to continue doing it because I'm not good at like being routine at something like doing like even if it's not really necessary like I don't know how I put up with it but even then like it was so hard to dance my dance teacher asked me if I was even going to be able to perform because there were days where I could barely finish bar I'd have to stop it was awful it was so awful no, it sucked. It hardcore sucked. Uh, but yeah, I finished. I finished the year out at CC's and got accepted into the Aspire program where I am now. Um, and I made the like the literally last minute decision to have surgery because I didn't want to go to a new program and not be a hundred and ten percent because that wouldn't have been okay. That would have been really, really, like, unprofessional. Especially if I wasn't 110%, if there was something wrong with me and they didn't know. So I found an orthopedic surgeon um, that had operated on my grandma and on my aunt. And we had heard really, really good things about him. He was just like, he's, I think, internationally now an orthopedic surgeon? I don't know. I don't know what he was doing in my hometown where like nothing happens, but I was able to get my insurance to go through and have my surgery. And he understood how important it was like as a dancer to have this surgery because I had to be back up and dancing in a very, very short period of time. Like I'm surprised he got me in so early because I moved into my apartment the first week of August and my surgery was the 
8th of July and my appointment was a week before that. My very first appointment with him was like a week before my surgery. It was crazy. It was so crazy. I almost don't remember it happening because it happened so fast. I mean, he moved people around and switched the days of people's surgeries so he could fit me in. It was, it was so nice. And most of the time, you can't find a surgeon who who will do that. That's very, it's very, very rare, is what he told me that pe they get in so quickly. Sometimes you have to wait months, or even just like a few weeks. But I waited less than a week for my surgery, which was hell yeah. And he also explained to me how. Or like where he was going to do the incision and instead of it being on the inside of my foot he cut on the outside in that like you know like you have your ankle bone and there's like a little pocket of like your like your foot just like it has a, like a big like swooshy kind of like dome shapey thing going like into your foot and that's where he made the incision um which was really, really nice because it was like right where he, this incision ended is where my ribbons like almost started. They were just a little bit higher up. So I didn't have that problem, thank goodness. But yeah, so I went in and did the surgery and, oh wait, I have something else to say about my cyst. Cause I was talking about the MRI that I never got to see. Um, when I was with the orthopedic surgeon in his office, they were able to bring up my MRI. And I'll insert it here. I'll move this way so you can see. Um, and it hurt, like you could see, I think it's right around here somewhere, I don't know, because the picture isn't here in the video. But it grew like three times the size of that. And this was taken a year before I had my surgery. So it got bigger. Uh, but as you can see, like the tendon, um, like where it was stuck between the tendon and the bones, it really hurt. Um, but yeah, the surgery went extremely well. Um, he said that like the cyst was like dough-like, like bread dough-like, or baked dough, I don't, whatever, dough, I guess. <laughs> um, but it, it had like wrapped itself around my tendons and my nerves. And that's why it was causing me so much pain is because it was like pushing on my nerves and my tendons. Um, but he was able to slide it out without having to cut any of my nerves or tendons or anything like that. The only thing he cut was the very like end of the ganglion cyst where it would like, where it had started so that it wouldn't grow anymore. He, he cut the stem of it. Um, but yeah, he said it was about the size of a golf ball when he took it out. And that's that's a pretty darn good size. My ankles are like, how do you fit a golf ball in your ankle? Like what? How, what? I, did, I wanted him to take a picture of it so I could see what it looked like, um, but he didn't. And I wanted him to save it and put it in a jar. But the surgery took a lot less time than they thought it would. I was in there like a half an hour, I think. Half an hour, 45 minutes, and they thought it'd be like another extra hour. So, whoop whoop. Um, and the stitches went in really nicely, and I was in a, like a plastic cast. I still have it, I'm not gonna go get it. If you go back and look at one of my update videos, um, I talked a little bit about my surgery then, because that was shortly after I'd had it. Um, but I was in my plastic cast for about two weeks and I was on crutches, I was supposed to be on crutches for five days and out of my boot in two weeks and had my stitches taken out and I think I was, I was on my crutches maybe like six days like it was really scary for me at first to walk because sometimes I could like feel the stitches in my foot which really made me uncomfortable, I didn't like it one bit, I hated it, it was gross um, but slowly but surely, I started putting more weight on the on my left foot, and um, a few days later, maybe about like by the time a week had passed for my surgery, I was um, starting to be able to walk with only like one crutch, and then a few days after that, I was able to walk completely on my own, 
maybe it's just a little limping. Um, I think one of the funniest things was though, um, is that like my best friend and I went to the grocery store to get some food and we were gonna have like a girls movie night. Like I think we watched horror movies and then we couldn't sleep. It was dumb, but we liked to do that. Uh, we walked to the grocery store and some old person came up and he's like, what happened to you? And I was like, I don't know you, but I had surgery because of a cyst. Yeah. But I got a lot of that. It was, it was kind of funny <laughs> when people would be like, oh no, what happened? I'd be like, I don't know who you are. So I had surgery and I'm going to go get myself some Sour Patch Kids. Okay, bye. Um, but yeah, two weeks later, I had my boot taken off and my stitches taken out and it had healed up very, very nicely. My mom and I kind of took like progressive pictures and every now and again, we'd unwrap it and look and see what, how it was doing and how my skin was healing. And it was looking pretty darn good. So the doctor gave me the A-OK -okay to uh, get my stitches taken out, get my boot taken off, and I was set to go. And then I moved. <laughs> like, a week after that, I moved. Um, so it was like literally like last minute surgery. But it was so nice. It was so nice. And so I moved all the way down here. I moved into a different state, like on the other side of the state, to be in the program that I'm in now. And I decided it'd be like a great idea to try to go full out for a class and the week we had with the artistic director, I got edema. And if you don't know what that is, is when your foot swells up and you can poke like your fingers into it and it'll leave an indent. And it's full of fluid and it's not good. So I had to call the doctor. I think my mom called the doctor for me because I couldn't get, I was so busy I couldn't get the chance to call him and they said, you need to stop dancing until the swelling goes down. And if it starts swelling up again, you need to stop dancing and wait. And I was like, no. But eventually it did, the swelling did go down and I started to be able to dance more and more. And I don't think the swelling f completely and fully went down until a full six or seven months after my surgery. Um, but I didn't give it enough time to actually like heal. There's stuff on the floor. Yeah, I didn't give it enough time at all to actually heal. And because of my edema, my scar like widened. It, it got bigger, like, yeah, wide, wise. I don't even know what I said. Um, yeah, but so far, the cyst hasn't come back. My scar is almost gone and I almost have like my full plie back, which I haven't had since I sprained my ankle, like two and a half years ago. No. No, it's like three years ago now. And I sprained my ankle. It's a work in progress. Um, so, I think that's it for this video. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Covered everything? I think I did. So, I hope this video helped you in some way, like understanding ganglion cyst surgeries in your foot and things like that, um, or just to give you like my my experience with my surgery and my ganglion cyst and all that jazz. So, if you like this video, you should give it a thumbs up and. If you're awesome, you should, or is it down here now? I think it's down here now. You should click that subscribe button. I don't know what side it's going to be on, but it's one of these two sides. I think it's this one. I could totally be wrong. Um, but yeah, and if you have any video suggestions, don't be afraid to send me a message on the YouTubes or Tumblr or Twitter because I don't get messages anyway, so I'll see it right away and be like, hey, how are you today? So yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Didn't get interrupted.